Hey, it's me, Nalthazar, and welcome to another Magic the Gathering Puzzle Quest video. In today's video, I'm going to be going over Angel of Destiny, which I think might be the most powerful single card in Puzzle Quest. So, let's get into it. Now, I know I'm beginning with a bit of a bold statement. The most powerful single card in Puzzle Quest? And don't get me wrong, I think that Omniscience is the most powerful card, but I'm saying single card. So if you have just this thing, you can do horrible things. So Angel of Destiny is 21 mana for a 5-9 flyer with double strike. While on the battlefield, all creatures gain lifelink, yours and your opponent's. And at the end of your turn, if you have full life, your opponent's Planeswalker loses half of their life rounded up. So as you're going to see on the left side of the screen, I'm going to have it split here. Uh, you're going to start to see uh, some footage backing up what it is that I'm saying about Angel of Destiny. So I'm having uh, the footage on the left while you see Angel of Destiny here on the right. Uh, you're going to see that I'm running Huatli against Karn. Now... The thing about Angel of Destiny that makes Angel of Destiny so incredibly, ridiculously powerful is the second ability, that at end of turn, if you have full life, your opponent's Planeswalker loses half of their life rounded up. That actually guarantees that Angel of Destiny auto-kills any Planeswalker in the game in three turns, all by itself. You can play no other cards that do damage but Angel of Destiny and you can beat any Planeswalker in the game with three Angel of Destiny attacks. Now, that means that, right, Angel of Destiny is going to come in, it's going to ping the opponent for half their life, and then it's going to, on your next turn, swing for 10, and then ping them for another half, swing for 10, ping for half, swing for 10, game over. And that's it. So here's Karn gone. Now, one of the wacky things about it is that it's not just going to be exclusive to what happens when you're playing against uh, Planeswalkers. In PvP, sorry, in PvE, it's going to have very similarly nasty effects. So you're going to chunk out your opponent's health so quickly that with the Angel of Destiny here, you're going to be able to win rounds in as many as five rounds after the Angel comes into play. This is against the higher health story mode monsters, and this is also going to even be against some of the higher health PvE coalition event monsters, right? So the highest health that any Planeswalker has in Puzzle Quest is Angrath with 135. And we're going to be taking a look at Angrath in just a moment. And the highest health for a PvE boss like Bolas is somewhere in the 524 ballpark. So I'm going to be showing Bolas in just a moment. I'll be going over my calculations for it there. Uh, and I'm also at the end of this whole explanation going to go over how I would actually build a deck around this angel. Now, as we go ahead and whittle away Ulamog here, um, I'm calling this Ulamog. I always call it the wrong thing. Uh, it's, I don't think it's Ulamog. Whatever. We'll see in just a moment. Uh, you can actually kill your opponent if your opponent's at one health with the Angel of Destiny because it, they lose half their life rounded up. So, uh, yeah, Ulamog. Ulamog's Curse Splat Splat. Now, let's get into some of those numbers that I was talking about. So if we go away from Angel of Destiny and we go to the Planeswalkers that exist in Puzzle Quest, we're going to start with Angrath because Angrath is our high point, right? So, do, 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 do. Oh, wait, Angrath is A. It's like I've forgotten the alphabet because I'm talking. Shame on me. Okay, so Angrath has 135 health, right? So that means you play Angel of Destiny, and then Angel of Destiny is immediately going to take away half of that 135. Remember, that's going to be rounded up. So we can go ahead and pretend that it's actually 136, which means that it's actually going to be stealing away 68 health. So if you play you play the Angel, then Engrath is going to drop by 68 health. Then, that's, then you get your first turn of attack. You're going to do 10 damage. That's going to drop it down to 58. And then Angrath is going to lose 29 to go down to 29. So that's the first turn of attacking. 
Then after being at 29, your next turn of attacking, you're going to do 10 more, bringing it down to 19. Uh, it's going to lose half of its health, which brings it down to 9. And then that third turn that you attack, you're going to be swinging for 10, and that's going to straight out kill it because it's only going to have 9 health. So the highest, highest health planeswalker in the game, Angrath, dies in three attacks to an Angel of Destiny. There is no other creature in the game that's going to be killing your the highest health planeswalkers in just three attacks, by the way, without any other things buffing it or uh, doing anything at all for that matter. So if we go to like some of the lower health planeswalkers in the game, and I don't think anyone's going to be super surprised to see me scrolling over to Soren, the garbage Soren, um, Soren Grim Nemesis, right? So Soren Grim Nemesis has 82 health. And so you'd think, wait, so 82 versus 135, that's a huge difference. But really, no, no, it's it's really not. Because Angel of Destiny, you bring out Angel of Destiny, Soren's 82 is immediately going to become 41. Then on your first turn of attacking, you're going to swing for 10. That's going to drop Soren down to 31. Uh, then the Angel of Destiny is going to go ahead and ping 16 health away from Soren, uh, taking it from 31 down to 15. Uh, so that's going to be our first turn of attacking. Our second turn of attacking, uh, Soren's going to be at 15. The Angel's going to swing it down with 10, so that's going to bring it down to 5. Soren's going to be down to two after the angel of destiny pings it again and then the third turn of attacking angel of destiny is going to be killing soren by hitting it for 10. so in the angrath example when we get to that little end game angrath has nine health versus soren having two health uh, when you hit it for that last time with the angel so you wind up seeing that there really isn't actually that much difference between a small health planeswalker and a large health planeswalker which means that angel of destiny does not discriminate on your opponent whatever your opponent's health total is angel of destiny is going to come in and absolutely chunk out their health pretty much no matter what else you have like you definitely want to have some kind of removal with it so that you're going to be at full health but this just shows the absolutely ridiculous power of angel of destiny Alrighty, now let's start chunking away Nicole Bolas, right? Nicole Bolas over here has some of the highest health in the game at 532. I said 524 earlier, shame on me, it's 532. That's uh, not going to make a huge difference, right? Now, let's be real. Against this Bolas, you're not going to play Angel of Destiny because this Bolas you play zero creatures against. But it's it's more to make a point about Bolas's health total and what Angel of Destiny is going to do to pretty much any health total. Remember, Angel of Destiny is going to kill any Planeswalker in the game in three attacks. Now, Bolas is, we're not counting this as a Planeswalker, right? This, this is a PvE boss. So Bolas has 532 health. You bring out an Angel of Destiny, and an Angel of Destiny is immediately going to uh, take Bolas down by 266 damage, right? It's just going to immediately ping Bolas for 266. Uh, so, Angel of Destiny comes out, Bolas goes from 532 to 266. Your first turn of attacking with Angel of Destiny, you're going to bring Bolas down to 256, at which point the Angel is then going to be taking away another 128. So that first turn of attacking, right, uh, at the end of that first turn of attacking, Bolas is already down to only 128 health. And if we learned anything about what that means with Angrath and Soren, that means that it's only going to take three more turns of the Angel of Destiny attacking. So uh, it, Nicole Bolas is going to be at 128. So that next turn of attacking, you're going to bring Bolas down from 128 to 118, at which point you're then going to be sapping away 59 life. So that's going to bring Bolas down to 59. Then the next turn, you're going to hit Bolas, bring Bolas down to 49, at which point you're going to take away 25 from the 49, which is going to put him at 24. And then the next turn, you're going to hit for 10, bringing it down from 24 to, oh, what, 14. And then it's going to go down to 7, and then you're going to go ahead and kill it with another clean attack. Um, so even the largest health planeswalker in the game right, or like one of them with Bolas, is still going to go down in, I think that was a clean five turns, right? So five turns of Angel of Destiny being down and the opponent dies. So 
If this wasn't enough to convince you about how strong this card is just on its own, without you using any other supporting cards, there's really probably not a whole lot more that I can do to convince you that this card is absolutely ridiculous. But believe you me, if you get this card and you start playing with it, it is insanely powerful. Now, how do I like actually building around Angel of Destiny? I made a video recently about what I think is the strongest core in Puzzle Quest right now, so you should not be surprised to see that core in this deck of Yasharn, Turn Timber Symbiosis, Realms Uncharted, and Reclaim the Wastes. Then I threw in Avatar of Growth and the Angel itself, and then I've got some other gem converters in the form of Gingerbread Cabin, Castle Garenbrig, and Dire Tactics and Ruinous Ultimatum for removal. That being said, if you wanted like an actual way that I would go about building a deck around Angel of Destiny, if you didn't have this, I will go ahead, take a look at what white walkers you have at your disposal. Ideally, you're gonna be putting Angel of Destiny into a dual color walker or a tri-color walker, just because white doesn't have a whole lot of independent removal outside of Dire Tactics and Ruinous Ultimatum right now. So let's say that for the time being that you were a huge fan of white black and so you wanted to use the OG best white black planeswalker in the game. So you'd go into your white back planeswalker. I'm gonna go ahead and build this in standard uh, just because I don't really play very much legacy. And don't get me wrong, I still use this card in legacy. So before I build this, if you're like, wait a minute, it, you're saying that this card is crazy. It actually took the slot in my legacy omniscience deck. So uh, my legacy omniscience deck is actually running Angel of Destiny. It's, it's strong enough that it has its own home in, in Legacy, and you'll see that it's already mastered. So, like, I, I play the heck out of this card. It's, it's that good. Um, but, yeah, if you're going to build around it, right, so you're going to want to go ahead and do a few things. So you want the Angel itself because, I mean, yeah, the Angel is, is crazy strong. Uh, and so this is what you can use as your sort of uh, basis for building around Angel of Destiny. Yep, so you want the Angel in your deck. Then after you put the angel in your deck, the next most important thing is that you actually have removal because, uh, spelling destroy wrong, smooth moves x lax. So you want to go ahead and put the removal in your deck because you need to have full life, right? So in order to have full life, uh, you want to make sure that you're getting rid of all of the horrible stuff that your opponent's gonna be putting onto the battlefield. So this is where you'd go through your removal cards and you'd probably want to throw in some of the nasty removal things that you have. Maybe you'd throw in something like Soul Shatter because it's going to get through things untargeted. Maybe you're going to go ahead and use something like Unholy Hunger just because you're newer to the game, you targeted getting some Origins rares, it's what you've got, so you're going to throw it in that way and that's fine. Maybe you're going to ru run something like Farika's Libation, right? This is going to destroy enchantments or creatures or bake into a pie. Or maybe you've gotten lucky, you've gotten yourself Hagra Mauling, which is going to destroy a critter and make a land. But however it is that you choose to do it, you're definitely going to want to go ahead and make sure that you are running that heavy, heavy removal with the Angel of Destiny. So I'd go ahead and throw in some removal. Wait a minute, Nalthazar, you just threw in Hagra Mauling, Mythos of Nathroy, and Ruinous Ultimatum. What happened to being a nice boy? Well, I don't know. I don't know. Next you are going to want to go ahead and put in whatever your beefy thick creatures are. If you're newer to the game and you don't have as many other things at your disposal, then I would actually go ahead and throw in some lifelink creatures. And yes, I do know that Angel of Destiny gives your creatures lifelink, but this is just going to make it so that you're more likely to have full health when Angel of Destiny comes out onto the battlefield. If you have other things that are able to do other sweet, sweet goodness, then by all means, go ahead and use other things that are able to do sweet, sweet goodness. I don't know, like Veto. <laughs> yeah, that's a thing, right? Angel plus Veto, yep. If you ever go up against this, I'm sorry in advance. I was not the one who showed you this. Or maybe I was, whatever. I take full responsibility. Full responsibility. Now, another card that I really like with Angel of Destiny is actually Alhammeret's Archive. I, I don't use Alhammeret's all that often right now, but with Angel of Destiny, it's great because you're gonna double the amount of life that you gain. And in doubling the amount of life that you gain, that's going to make it so that uh, this Angel of Destiny is going to give all your things life link. You're going to gain life twice as fast. And so you're probably going to get to that max health a little bit more quickly. Now, after you do that, you're going to want to go ahead and put in your gem conversion. So I'm going to go ahead and type in convert to black. 
Now you could use convert to whatever it is, the color that you have at your disposal. So you know what, let's convert to white because I happen to be one of those lucky peoples that has a Mary of the Sky Ruin. And this will bring back my angels for free. Muhahaha. <laughs> and then finally, you're gonna wanna round it out with something that draws you cards. Yes, we do have all hammerets, but uh, if, you can, if you can throw something in, uh, something else in that draws you cards, that's good. Or if you can buff your angel, uh, that's also going to be a, a pretty sweet way to go. This this doesn't feel like standard. This is standard. Man, there's there's way more in these colors that draw us cards than I gave myself credit for. Or them credit for, or, you know, something like that. But, anywho, yeah, you're going to throw in, like, one more critter and call it good. And then you're going to go to your opponent and say, Hello, opponent. It's Wappy Wappy's times. And then you're going to go ahead and steamroll your opponent. Uh, for that matter, let's go ahead. Do we have any other cool draw cards? Nah, we want a creature. Who am I kidding? Let's put Baneslayer in. I love Baneslayer so much. Ba -bum! And I built a deck around Angel of Destiny. So, you don't need the cards that I have. You just need to have Angel of Destiny plus removal plus gem conversion equals win. Seriously, that's it. Just this equals win. So, I hope that this video was helpful for you. Uh, Soren Grim Nemesis will not be helpful for you. Do not get this Planeswalker. It is trash. Okay. Um, moving away from Soren and back to the beautiful angel. Which is, you know what, faster to be reached by going to Teferi, Legacy Omniscience, and Angel of Destiny. By the way, in my previous video, Keaton Howell, you asked to see some of my decks that I keep saved. This is one of those four decks that I was telling you about that I keep saved. So... Uh, I always have this Omniscience deck saved. Uh, I actually will change out a single card in it, depending on the event that I'm playing but and the objectives, but this is one of my very few saved decks. Uh, I actually like building my decks every time events come out. It makes the game fresh for me. But, okay. Yeah, had to answer fans. All right. So Angel of Destiny is amazing. Like I said, I hope this video was helpful for you. Go ahead and put it into a deck. If you don't have it, uh, this is definitely worth chasing. This is one of the best cards in the set, hands down. Like, the things that this card is able to do to your opponents, it's, like, power is second to none. So good. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.